Hello everyone, Miles at Miles of Color here everywhere online. In this video, we are going to be learning how to take your iPhone portraits to the next level using Adobe Photoshop. I'm making this video because I told you once I would reach 500 subscribers, I would make my first ever tutorial. I've been asked a lot on Instagram to do that, and so here we are, we're doing it. This is the first time I'm ever like making a tutorial or doing any kind of screen capturing on my computer here. Also, my screen is about halfway broken here, so the screen recording that you're going to be getting is kind of gonna be uh, like a section of my screen because that's the only part that I can see. Anyways, enough said. We're going to be taking this photo from my friend Kara and we're going to be transforming it in Photoshop to this photo. The reason we're starting with like an iPhone edit in Photoshop is because I want you guys to understand that you don't need fancy gear to kind of get a nice photo. You just need good lighting and a smartphone. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell thing for notifications when I post a video. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. All my links will be down below. You can find me at Miles of Color, or if you're going on Snapchat, it's Miles McCormack. I'm putting the link thing right on my face right now. That's where it is. Right now, it's on my face. All right, one more disclaimer before we get started. I am self-taught. I am full-time a photographer and photo editor, but I am very self-taught, so if I'm do things a little weird that's just because that's how I've learned or that's how, what works for me so you know take everything I'm doing with a grain of salt if you have any recommendations for ways I could do things let me know so I can grow as an editor and photographer or hopefully you learn something from this video so let's hop right in and let's have some fun with this iPhone photo okay so now we are recording okay so I have this little folder on my computer it's just my iPhone folder don't really worry about that I just have this here for you guys to see so we're gonna click on our iPhone image and go to open with and go to open with Adobe Photoshop so here I have some actions um, I might link them down below we will see I don't know how to export actions but that could be a tutorial I'll look up later for this um, anyways okay so here is the original photo that Kara gave me it's really pretty uh, she has Looks like she has like really well done makeup on, so I don't have to worry so much about doing any sort of like touch up or anything. And the lighting's really good; it's not super harsh on her body. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a duplicate layer down here. I just make a duplicate layer because I like to make adjustments sometimes. Like I might hop in and like take something out, like right here. I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna spot heal it out. Boom! It's gone. That little blemish that's already clear to my eye it wasn't a big deal but like the, but the subtle details they really really count i guess we'll just do things right from the start so the way i dodge and burn is i use two curve layers some people just like to go and like fully dodge and burn but i like to have the option to go back and kind of readjust everything that i'm doing because i'm kind of a messy editor sometimes so we're just gonna do this all right so that bottom layer right here I'm going to make it kind of like low contrast right here in that first box. And then the second one, I'm going to pump the contrast up right here. I'm saying contrast, but I mean highlight. So on the bottom one, I'm, I'm making it darker in the shadows. The top one, I'm making it brighter in the highlights. Okay, so click that white layer here. It is a layer mask and uh, we're gonna do Command I, boom. And then Command I on the top layer there. And then I'm gonna put these guys in a group and call it Dodge Burn. Boom. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing with dodging and burning is, so for burning, I'm gonna dodge, or <laughs> sorry, for burning, I'm gonna burn the shadows here. So really kind of every like shadow you see on Kara or like around the image, I kind of just burn just to add some extra contrast. So I'm gonna start up here on her face. I'm gonna just burn a little bit. And make sure you have white selected down here so you can draw on this layer mask. So I'm going to burn here, burn the eyebrows a little bit, I'm going to burn her lashes, amazing freaking lashes. The makeup on her right now is like so good, and she's so good at her makeup. Just amazed, wow, so good, wow. Okay, so I'm even like burning like little bits of hair and stuff just because this is how I edit. I'm very like dramatic when it comes to editing. I'm just doing all these shadows right here. Gonna make that one a little bit less. There we go. I didn't mean to do that one. Well, I did, but I thought it would look a little bit different. Even like, yeah, the out, the outer edges of her arms, right here on her leg. And I know it looks harsh right now, but I'm going to kind of like lower the opacity later. All right, getting there, we're getting there. Almost done with the burning. 
And like I said, this is just to basically kind of add some, some contrast, some drama to the photo because it is an iPhone, so it doesn't have like crazy dynamic range and we kind of want to add a little bit of that in there. Cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Let me just dodge this inside of her arm. Boom, like that. Or burn, I guess. So that's what it looks like with the burn so far. And I'm probably going to lower that opacity. Or actually, I'm going to leave it up and then I'll lower the whole folder in a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to dodge. Going to give her a little boost in the highlight over here. Let's see. I always like to go in and kind of like do lips as well. Boom. Boom. And doing some nose dodging as well. I just love her makeup, it's so good. So basically I'm just amplifying kind of like what her makeup already is in post. Might do a light, light little bit on her chin here. Gonna brush up. And yeah, this is just kind of how I start my photo. I always like to kind of do like some dodging and burning, very light bits. I'm gonna take that off, I didn't actually like that. And then I'm gonna get like these like highlights in her hair really gonna boost them on my end over here and also I would like to throw on screen real fast some iPhone photos that I have edited and posted on my Instagram there's one here of Ali it's when we went to um, LA we met my friend Sway that was the first time I think we ever met him and uh, that photo was taken at Griffith Observatory I believe I think that's where we were at or the Getty. No, I think it was Griffith. I'm pretty sure. And um, yeah, it was a pretty crazy iPhone edit that we got to do together. And then there's another one of my friend Sierra. It is not posted on my page, but I'm also I'm like I'm very proud of it. I think it's really good. And so the reason that I like to do iPhone photos is because you don't need anything fancy sometimes. Like, yes, it's great to have like a super nice camera that does you know everything that you need it to do. And like it's it's a workhorse, you know. But like. I think it's so fun like doing photos like this and being like, yeah, I edited this on my freaking computer and I shot it on my iPhone and it looks like everything else on Instagram. I don't know. It just makes me feel like a little, a little cocky. All right, so I'm fixing up my dodging here. I got a little reckless. I'd have to say so myself. I'm going to lower it just a little bit, probably like to like, like 60 to 70%. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is a background blur. So I'm going to command J my layer one here and then I'm going to name this top one blur and this can be underneath or whatever you want to call it I don't really care and then we're going to convert that blur layer to a smart layer okay then we're going to use Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur or whatever the heck you want to call it I don't know what's proper and we're going to blur it 3.6 okay so we're getting this kind of like this soft blur around all the edges here edges what am I saying the entire photo is blurred right okay then we're gonna go to the underneath layer click W W and we're just going to click around here and we're selecting Kara right now because I'm going to not have her blurred in the actual photo and I'm going to have like most of the background blurred you'll see in a second let me just like hop through here and do my thing I used to just paint my selections, like that was all I did, I would always just paint my selections and uh, I'm happy that I am back to using the magic wand or whatever the heck this thing is called because it's so much faster. Okay cool, so I have my selection, I'm going to go down here and click this button, it's going to add a layer mask for us. Then I'm going to drag that layer mask up here onto our blur layer, drop it, and then select that layer mask and press command I. Boom, okay, so we have blur all over the photo now, except on Kara. And we're gonna do a little bit more adjusting here, so I'm going to get my brush tool, and we're gonna draw on this top um, layer mask. We're gonna bring opacity down to about, about 50%, and I'm gonna kind of like draw on the foreground a little bit, maybe even less, maybe like 30, 20% because I'm just trying to like make it a little bit more realistic, the blur. And I know that like, you know, like you don't have to do this, but um, 
I just think it adds like a cool depth to the photo. I think it makes it look a little bit more professional, a little more dreamy, which is kind of like my aesthetic, like whimsical, dreamy portraits. So that's what I'm going for here. Awesome. Okay, that's my blur. And now I want to do an eye edit. So I'm going to go to adjustments and I'm going to make an exposure. Awesome, cool. And then we're going to command I that layer one more time. That's it. That's a theme here. We always do Command I all of the time. We're going to paint white onto our layer mask. So we're going to just highlight right here on her eye, not her pupil, but just the rest of her eye. And then let's open up our exposure window. Raise the exposure a bit. I'm probably going to boost it pretty high, honestly. Yeah about two stops and then we're gonna increase our gamma correction a little bit it's kind of like a contrast perfect maybe even three three stops let's see yeah I love that now a lot of people don't like you know edited eyes or like unnatural eyes but it's kind of something I really like to do I think it adds like some kind of like mysticism to the photo it really looks super different um, and it's just kind of like what I like to do to my photos and the next thing I'm going to do is this action where I add um, just a lot of adjustments that I like to have in here. So I'm going to just click on my action. It's called exposure and coloring. Boom, it's right there. It's this folder. And what is in there, and I'm going to add one more actually hue and saturation adjustment. Did I? Yeah. Wait, did I? No, I didn't. Boom. There we go. Okay, cool. So bottom to top, it's hue, saturation, selective color. Hue, saturation, vibrance, curves, and exposure. So I'm basically just going to be reading my notes here and adjusting what I did in my previous edit. I'm not doing like a live edit of this, but I'll kind of show you what I did. So this bottom layer here, I did negative one on my overall um, master, and then I did minus seven. I can't tell you why I did that, but I did do it. I'm trying to get the exact same result that I'm going for. Um, usually I'll have an explanation for what I'm doing, but this time I don't. Okay, then for our selective coloring, I'm going to do negative 13 here. We're going to be doing, I believe, 9 on magenta, and then we're going to do negative 1 on black. All right, so are we, we're getting a little difference already. Okay, then we're gonna go down to science, science, whatever you wanna call them, science, whatever you wanna call them. And we're going to go plus 17, minus 50, zero, and then 35. And what I'm adjusting right now is for shorts. I kinda want them to be like a teal. I'm gonna adjust blues as well. We're gonna go 10, negative 63, and teal is something that I always add into my photos. We're going to add 14. And then we're going to do 29 here. Just because it's kind of something that has been a signature of mine, like a teal orange effect or teal and pink effect in my photos. And then right here on saturation, we're just going to boost it to 10. I don't know why I did this here. I'm not sure, but I did do it. And that's just how we're going to do it in this one. For my vibrance layer, we're going to add 29 vibrance and then 5 on saturation. I have to compensate for my screen since it's broken. I kind of oversaturate on my screen because it's not as saturated on my phone because it's not calibrated correctly anymore, which kind of sucks. And then for the curves, I always, I'm not an S curve person. I'm like a, I'm like a C curve person. I like to boost right here in the middle, just a little bit on our exposure. And then see this black arrow down here? I drag it a little bit to the right just to add some punch to the photo. So you can see that kind of before and after. It's a nice exposure nice exposure boost right there and contrast boost and then we're gonna go to our exposure layer we're going to add 10 wow no that's point 10 I think point 10 there we go cool point 10 and then our gamma is going to be 0.95 and I think that's how I like it so that's the before and after of our exposure and coloring and then here's the before and after of our editing in Photoshop 
Okay, now where I'm going to tell you kind of the settings that I did using ViscoCam or VSCO app on your iPhone. It is free. I think it's available for Android as well, so don't worry about paying for it. Um, and then Photoshop, it's not free, but you can get some really good edits using Lightroom Mobile on your phone as well. So I might do a tutorial using that program sometime soon just so you can kind of see what you can do for free on your phone. Okay, so I'm opening up ViscoCam right now on my phone and I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I did on the edit here. Okay, so there is my final edit. There's the before, that's the thing we exported out of Photoshop onto my computer, air dropped it over to my phone here, and now we're editing in ViscoCam. So I'm just gonna show you the steps that I went through basically. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna mess anything up, but I use Hypebeast 1. I love it, it's kind of like this like more blue kind of toned, um, preset that I just I love using it. It's so good. I and I don't ever have it on a hundred It's just too much But for like some basic toning I have it around five on here and it's it works out fine And then I added some contrast plus seven I did skin tone which kind of it changes like the oranges from like more orange or a little more red And I just added some more orange by plus I added about two stops of that skin tone and that just kind of made it more orange, I guess. And then I did some sharpening in here as well. I did plus, almost plus two. And then grain, I did 3.2. You can really see the grain on this photo. So much grain. But I like it because it's an iPhone photo, so it just kind of looks more like natural on it. Like it looks like we're using, or it looks like we're going for that effect, you know? And then let's see what else I did. A light vignetting, about one stop. And that's all I did. Then I exported, um, I think, let's see, I exported, how do you export? Oh, save to camera. Just at the actual size, which was about 1600 by 2000. And uh, then I posted it straight to Instagram. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. That was how to take your iPhone portrait to the next level using Adobe Photoshop. I hope you liked it. I'm kind of nervous. This was my first tutorial ever. It'll get better in the future. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I vlog. I talk about feelings. I talk about motivation. I do silly kind of like truth or dare videos as well with my girlfriend and my friends. Just a lot of things on this channel. You can expect a video at least once a week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you. I love you. Bye. Go tell your friends about it. About it. Go tell your friends about it. About